If you've been around coding for a bit, you may have heard of decorator functions. Well, what are they and how do we use them? We're going to answer those questions in today's topic. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now. The description also has a link to earn script. Remember, you can use script to get free courses. So let's dive into it. A decorator function is simply a function that receives another function as a parameter and then returns a new function with extended behavior. So you can pass a function into a decorator function and you'll get a new function back that does more than the function you passed in. The decorator pattern has been around for a while and is generally used to enhance objects, decorate them. New syntax is in the JavaScript pipeline to make this much easier in JavaScript. But today I just want to talk about decorator functions, functions used to enhance other functions. Let's take a look at an example. Once you see an example, I think it will make sense. So I'm going to set up a decorator function and what this particular function is going to do is it's going to receive a function so a decorator function is always a higher order function because it receives and returns a function it's going to receive that function and then it's going to return a new function and what that new function is going to do is use a try catch when the functions invoked so this might be a decorator that we use for some function that in certain situations may have an error and we don't want it to kill our code. So let's call this error decorator. And we need a parameter for receiving the function. So we're just going to place that in Fn. Now, what are we going to do? Well, this returns a function. So let's do that from the very start here. So it's going to return a function and we don't always know how many arguments the function we're passing in is going to have. So we're going to handle that this way. We're going to use the spread operator to gather those arguments into the args variable here and then we'll spread those out when we actually invoke the function. So there's our return statement. We're returning a function. Now we just have to put what goes inside that function. So here's how we're going to do that. As I said, we want to use a try catch block so that we can create a new function out of an existing function. And this new function will go ahead and invoke. But if there's an issue that causes an error, it's not going to stop the rest of our code from running. So here's our try catch block. So the first thing I want to do inside the try is I'm just going to do a console log. I just want to log out that uh, we're running function. Let's see. And then what we'll do is we'll just grab the name of the function like this. Okay. So that's simply going to log the fun the console that we're running that. And then we just want to invoke that function. So we passed it in here. It's in our variable. So to invoke a function, we just use parentheses. Now we want to pass in those arguments. So let's do it like that. There we go. Now we're invoking that function inside of a try catch. If there is an error, then we'll do something like console dot. Let's do warn. And then display what that error is. Simple as that. All right. So we have our decorator uh, function here. Let me just create a simple function that we're going to use our decorator function in. And I, I want it to set up so I can produce an error with it. So what I'm going to do is just parse some JSON here. And then if I pass in an empty string, it'll get an error. Okay, so we're doing that there. And then we'll just log it to the console. So we're parsing that JSON data, logging it to the console. And to make this somewhat functional, I'll actually return that object that's been parsed as well. So here is our original function. And generally, generally we run it in a situation where we know the string passed in is valid JSON. So it will parse that correctly. However, 
we're using it in a new application where sometimes we receive the JSON, sometimes we don't. Um, and we're not always certain about that. So we could modify things. We could modify this function or we just use a decorator to enhance it. And so that's what we're going to do here. Whoops. So I'm going to create a new variable. And we'll call we'll make the variable parse error because this is going to be the parse function, but it's going to be able to handle errors. And then what do we set that equal to? Well, error decorator, and we pass in the function like that. So this will return a function, parse error, then we'll be able to use it. All right. Let's stop at that point and go ahead and take a look at it. So I'm going to save that. We'll refresh here and Let's see, got an error here. I did not concatenate like I should have. Let's try that again. Okay, now we can go ahead and run parse error. And I'm just gonna pass in an empty string here to that. And notice we get the, the warning. The warning is point unexpected end of JSON input. So basically there's something wrong with the the JSON, which because it's an empty string, there is. But notice we got this console that it's running that function. And um, we did not get the error message. So if we had code after this, it would continue to run. It wouldn't interrupt it. So parse error is now an enhanced function because of a decorator function. So that's how simple it is to create a decorator function. Now, uh, let me show you one more, just as another example. I'll just enter the code for this one. We won't actually execute it. But let's say we wanted a decorator function that uh, would check to see how long it took the function to execute. So I'll just call it log decorator. That probably not the best name, but we'll use it for now. So we're going to return a function. And what's in that function? I'm going to first log to the console that we are executing um, function. This time I'll include my concatenation operator. This will allow us to see what function we're executing. And then what I'm going to do is a console.time. And I'm just going to use the label fn. So this allows us to check how many milliseconds pass between the time that the function is executed and when it ends. So now we'll invoke that function like this. Now we could have done the arguments thing as well here. And then we do console to end the time. We do time end. And we use the same label so that we can get a length of time for how long that went. And then here we're going to return the value. So we got the value back from the function. Now we're returning it. But in addition to doing the function, whatever the function is that's passed in, doing that and returning the value, in addition to that, we're also checking to see how long it takes to execute. So simple decorator function, another one. And so what we would do is we would set up another variable just like we did here. We'd pass in the function that we wanted to check to see how long it took to execute. That would return a new function. We would then use that variable. We would use parentheses to invoke that. That would invoke the new function. So really simple decorator functions, but uh, very valuable in certain situations. All right, please hit that like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click that bell button to, no to be notified about new releases. I really try to release a new tutorial each week. And once again, thanks for watching.